Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to Windows Diary. I am your host, Leela Window, And today, we're going to do a part two of part one of the Genesis series uh, about what exactly is fornication? What is its origin? So that is what we're going to talk about today. So stay tuned. So before I even start, be sure to hit that subscribe button and keep up with the trends. So yeah, so today we're going to talk about the origin of fornication. And I noticed that most people during the part one were saying that if NIV says this about 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9, King James Version says a totally different thing. So today I'm going to talk about the origin of fornication. Like where did that word originate from? We're going to go into that. And then we're going to talk about King James Version, the first version. Why is it that that version is so different from other translations that were done after it? So yeah, so we're going to talk about that today. Let's get to it. So I'm going to... I'm going to start with the origin of fornication. Fornication is generally cons consensual sexual intercourse between two people not married to each other. When one or more of the partners having consensual sexual intercourse is married to another person, it is called adultery. Nonetheless, John Calvin viewed adultery to be any sexual act that is outside the divine model for sexual intercourse, which includes fornication. For many people, the term carries an, overto an overturn of moral, moral of religious disapproval. But the significance of sexual acts to which the term is applied varies between religious, religious societies and cultures. In modern usage, the term is often replaced with more judgment-neutral terms like premarital sex, extramarital sex, or recreational sex. So that is the meaning of fornication. And then let's get to the root of fornication. In the original Greek version of the, of the New Testament, the term pornia, um, into bracket prostitution, is used 25 times. So in the original Greek version, the original Greek version of the New Testament, and the query that we have is actually in the New Testament, from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. The one that talks about uh, the, the King James Version being different from our NIV and the RSV and the ESV. So yeah, so in the original Greek version of the New Testament, the term ponia, into brackets prostitution, is used 25 times, including var variants such as the gene gene genitive. Mm -hmm. in, in the late 14th century, the Latin Vulgate, a Latin translation of the Greek texts translated the term as phoniketi. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce these words, guys. So phoniketi, phonicatas, phonicata, and phoniketai. The term phonication and phonicators are found in the 1599 Geneva Bible, the 1611 King James Version, the 1899 Catholic the Bible and the 19, oh, 1901 American Standard Version, many modern post World War II Bible translation completely avoid all use of fornicators and fornication. English Standard Version, New Living uh, Translation, New International Version, Christian Standard Bible, Good News Bible, and Contemporary. English version, do not use the term fornication or fornicators, where one translation may use fornication, another translation may use wardom, sexual immorality, e.g. Matthew 19 um, verse 9, or more simple immoral or immorality. But the thing that I want you guys to take note of is that in the original Greek version of the Bible, of the New Testament to be precise, the term Ponia 
into brackets, prostitution is used 25 times, including variants such as the genitive. So meaning, in the original Greek version of the New Testament, the word that was there was actually prostitution. The word that was there, and it was written 25 times, meant prostitution. But later on, in the late 4th century, the Latin Vulgate, a Latin translation of the Greek text, translated the term as phoniceti, phonicators, phonicata, and phonicatea. So definitely, you guys can see that in the beginning, in the first Greek version of the New Testament, the word that was there was ponea. This word, ponea, was there. It meant prostitution. But later on, in the Latin, um, in the 14th century, the Latin Vulgate, a Latin translation of the Greek texts, translated the term as phonia, phonicators, phonicata, and phonicatea. So already you guys have seen that, that this word, phonication, actually was not there. It was later translated by, a Latin, by the Latin Vulgate in the 4th century. And then it was used in King James Version. So the term fornication and fornicators are found in 1599 Geneva Bible, the Geneva Bible, the one that was first there before now the King James Version. So the Geneva Bible, King James Version, and the Catholic Doe uh, Bible, and the American Standard Version, were the ones that used the word fornication. But bear in mind, guys, that the word that was there was actually prostitution. So why don't we read from the book of... Um, let's open the book of James. No, let's open the book. Not James, to be precise. Let's open the book of 1 Corinthians. So guys, I'll read from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Um, from NIV, to be precise. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor adulterers, nor ad idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, or slanderers, or swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you are. But you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So I've read from NIV. That was a version from NIV. Now let's go to the King James Version of the Bible. So King James Version, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, so where they've kept the word fornicators, actually, this is what I want you guys to, to actually take into consideration, that where they've kept the word fornicators, neither fornicators, the word that was there before was ponia, and it means what? Prostitution. Was ponia, and it means what? Prostitution. So that is the Greek word that was there, and it meant prostitution. It is not even the word fornicators. The word fornicator was not there. The Latin Vulgate is, on, is the one that later translated it to fornicata, forni what, whatever that was. The term fornication and fornicators, yeah. And then it was later translated to English, fornication, fornicator. But originally that word meant prostitution. That's why I was asking you guys if indeed... Okay, let's, let's get to the Roman Empire. Let's understand, like, how did this word come up with the Roman Empire? The word fornication. How was it used in the Roman Empire? When did it come up? Was it not there? So that's what you're going to get into. During the 6th century, Emperor Justinian formulated legislation that was to become the basis of Western marriage law for the next millennium. Under his laws, Cohabiting couples were no longer recognized as married, and their children were regarded as illegitimate, with the same status as the children of prostitutes. However, the status of illegitimate children could be updated if the parents later married. So what does this tell you guys? That before, actually, cohabiting couples were regarded as married couples, because they did not... They did not have to go through the legal system like the way we do right now. They did not have to like go to church. No, like in the African society, guys, in Africa, 
when a man sees a woman and is interested in that woman, that man goes to the family, talks to the family and pays bride, pays bride price for that woman. This is the same thing that was happening in the book of Exodus. When, if you guys checked, um, if you've watched part one of this, or if you've listened to it, you'll notice that I read from the book of Exodus. Okay, so you'll notice that I read from the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 16 where it shows how Moses, the things, how marriage used to happen during the time of Moses. It says, if a man seduces a virgin who is not pledged to be married and sleeps with her, he must pay the bride price and she shall be his wife. If her father absolutely refuses to give her to him, he must still pay the bride price for virgins. So guys, do you seriously think that this word fornicators or fornication is biblical. That is one thing that I want to leave you guys with. Do you, do you seriously think that the word fornication is biblical? Like I've read the origin of this word. You've seen where this word originated from. You've seen that this word was not there before. Like from the translation of, of uh, the first Greek Bible, it says in the original Greek version of the New Testament, the term Ponya, it meant prostitution. It did not mean fornication. So in the late 14th century, the Latin Vulgate, a Latin translation of the Greek texts, translated the term as fornicati. It translated this term. This term did not mean fornication, but it translated this term into fornicati, fornicators, fornicata, and fornicatea. The term fornication and fornicators are found in the Geneva Bible and later on in the King James Version of the Bible. So definitely this word was not there. And I've been asking the question, do you think the word fornicators is biblical? Do you think this word is biblical? So by for, so far, whatever we've read, do you still think this word is biblical? Do you still think that primarily premarital sex is sin? I just shrugged and couldn't hold my laugh. So we've already read like from the Roman Empire, we've already read like where this word, um, fornic how fornication came to be. Um, during the sixth century, Emperor Justina formulated legislation that was to become the basis of Western marriage laws. So this is, so in the 16th century, this is when the law was created. So in the 16th century, Emperor Justina formulated legislation that was to become the basis of Western marriage laws for the next millennium. Under these laws, cohabiting couples were no longer recognized as married and their children were regarded as illegitimate with the same status as the children of prostitutes. However, the status of illegitimate children could be updated if the parents later married. Does that even make sense? That you're not married, but yet you've slept with someone. Does that make sense? Does that really make sense to you guys? Okay, let's get to Great. Let's um, let's go to Great Britain because you know Great Britain. This is where King James the First trans um, sponsored or rather uh, ordered the tr the new translation of the Bible. So to King James version of the Bible, so his own word at it. So that's why it's very crucial for us to go to Great Britain and understand Great Britain. So in the, in the 1170s, it was common practice for ordinary couples to cohabit before marriage and for cousins to marry one another. And there was very little stigma around bastards at any social level in medieval England. For instance, William the Conqueror's right to succeed to the throne of Normandy was never questioned on the ground he was a bastard nor. In his conflict with Harold Gold Wilson over who should rule England, was this issue raised? So this issue of actually being a child uh, from a marriage that was not legalized or rather formal done under the laws, so this is when actually fornication was raised. So it reads, for instance, William the Conqueror's right to succeed to the throne of Normandy was never questioned on the grounds he was a bastard nor. In his conflict with Harold Godwinson over who should rule England, 
was the issue raised as an argument against him. However, attitudes shifted a few generations later when bastards were no longer able to claim England throne. So you guys still think that the word fornication is biblical? So you guys still believe that when you have sex before quote-unquote formal marriage, it's sin? Do you still believe that? So yeah, let's, let's continue reading. During the ascendancy of Puritans, an act of an act for suppressing the detestable sins of incest, adultery, and fornication was passed by the English Council of State in 1615. At the restoration in 1660, the statute was not renewed, and prosecution of the mere act of fornication itself was abandoned. However, notorious and open lewdness when carried to the extent to exiting public scandals continued to be an indicatable offense at common laws however fornication is a private sense was not illegal so it says however fornication in a private sense was not illegal so you guys still believe that fornication is literally a word in the bible it was there We've already read from the beginning that the first translation, the first translation of the Bible, in the original Greek version of the New Testament, the term ponia, it meant prostitution, not fornication, is used 25 times, including variants such as the genitive. It's used there. So you guys still think? So the word fornication came later on in the 14th century. The Latin Vulgate, a Latin translation of the Greek text, translated the term as fornicati, fornicators, fornicata, and fornicatea. The term fornication and fornicators are found in the 1599 Geneva Bible, the 1611 King James Version, the 1899 Catholic Dolorum Bible, and the 19 or one American Standard Version. So you guys still think that the word fornication is a word in the Bible? You guys still think that the word fornication is actually biblical? So you guys still think that sex before marriage is sin or other premarital sex? Because the marriage that is talked about in the word fornication, I stated in part one that this was the formal, quote unquote, formal union. Let me let me find that. Let me try and get that get that meaning. The legally or formally recognized union of two people as persons in a personal relationship. So definitely the the marriage that is termed in the word fornication on itself while defining fornication is the legally or formally recognized union of two people as persons in a personal relationship. Do you think that this do you think that this definition of marriage is biblical? I think the second definition is biblical. It says, a histori historically, and in some jurisdictions specifically, a union between a man and a woman. That is exactly what marriage is. A, a union between a man and a woman. But the question remains, what unites a man and a woman? What brings a man and a woman together? What did God intend for marriage? How did ma God intend marriage to happen? So look at yourself. The moment I said, if you're a virgin, when you look at uh, Adam and Eve from our own forefathers, I stated in part one of this series that Adam and Eve, Adam was created, but he didn't have uh, someone, a helper. Then God created Eve specifically for Adam. Eve was specifically created for Adam. So God intended for marriage to happen between one man and one woman. And whatever was to seal this marriage was sex. The moment a man has sex with a virgin, that man is linked to that woman forever. And even when you read in the book of Exodus chapter 22 verse 16, it states clearly during the time of Moses, whenever a man had sex, had sex with a virgin, Automatically, that man was to pay bread price and that woman was to become his wife. So whatever was to seal marriage is, the, is actually, because marriage is a covenant. And whenever a covenant was made in the Bible, blood was shed. 
So I don't know why people find this topic as being controversial and yet these things are so straightforward. And I'll link below whatever I'm reading from this, I'll link it below for you guys so you can go ahead and read on your own and try and understand. It has almost everything from the Great Britain, United States, Islam, where did the word fornication come from in Islamic, and then uh, we've, also, we've also talked about, um, I won't talk so much, guys. So I want you guys to go and do research on your own. I think we've just, we've, sum, we've summarized everything in this part two. I've literally summarized everything in this part two. So you guys go and check part one out. It was so long. I didn't want it to be that long. So thank you so much for those who have watched. I highly appreciate and yeah, today I wasn't feeling well, but I just decided to do this episode because so many people asking me this question, especially um, because King James version was totally different from the NIV version that I gave. So people are feeling like, uh, -uh yo, yo, this is conspiracy theory. But clearly, you guys have seen that the word fornication was not there in the Bible. In the original Greek version of the New Testament, the term ponia it meant prostitution. Then later on, in the 14th century, the Latin Vulgate, a Latin translation of the Greek text, translated the term as fornicati, fornicatus, fornicata, and fornicatea, which later on, when translated in Geneva Bible and the King James Version, it was later translated into fornication. So you guys still think that the word fornication is biblical? So you guys still think that premarital sex is sin? No, it's not. And whatever was meant to seal a marriage was sex. So if you're a virgin out there and you haven't lost your virginity to any man, please do not do it. Do not have sex with anyone unless he has gone to your parents, talked to your parents, said whatever he wants to do with you. He has stated his plans with you and he's straight up with you. And make sure that this person is a good person. I linked, um, I did an episode on what to think about before really getting into relationship. I did an episode on that. When you go through um, my episodes, the recent episode that I did, you'll find it there. It's all about relationship, what you need to think about and what not. So thank you guys so, so much for watching this. I hope that I've answered your questions. And those who are listening in or tuning in on Spotify, thank you guys so much. May the Lord bless you. And those who have subscribed to my channel i'm so humbled guys honestly speaking i'm so humbled and i'm so in love so thank you so so much guys i highly appreciate may the lord bless you may he guide you may he be with you and may you learn to read the bible understand and also go deeper and do a research so thank you guys so so much have a blessed day bye